Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Brownstone Worldwide. I'm Paulette. I'm a part of Brownstone Worldwide. You're in the Brownstone Worldwide studios. And today, 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 we're going to have an opportunity to speak to uh, someone that I think you're going to find really interesting, especially since we're going to be covering sports for the month of September. I think you're really going to enjoy this. So, let me go ahead and get started so that you can sit back, relax, chill out, and learn from a businessman from Detroit, Michigan. Let me tell you who we're going to be talking to today. His name is Ryan Reed, and this gentleman has a lot going on. Are you guys ready for this? He's hailing all the way from the heart of Detroit, Michigan. Mr. Reed is the epitome of determination, passion, and business acumen. A serial entrepreneur, Reed's journey began on the football fields of the Stars Professional Football League. His athletic prowess not only made him a household name, but also taught him discipline, teamwork, and the importance of dreaming big. But football was just the beginning for Reed. Transitioning from cleats to the boardroom, Ryan founded Reed and Associates Protection Security Team, a testament to his commitment to ensuring safety and top-notch service in the realm of security. His love for sports never waned, however, and that drove him to acquire the Detroit Cougar football team, further entrenching his legacy in the city's sporting scene. And he's not stopping there, folks. Reed showcased his dedication to elevating women in sports by founding the Women's Basketball League. Through this initiative, he aims to provide women athletes with a platform to showcase their talent and in the prowess that they consume inspire countless others. So today... Ryan Wee Reed is more than just an entrepreneur. He's a beacon of hope in Detroit and around the world, embodying the city's resilient spirit, whether it's on the field, in the security industry, or through promoting women's sports. Reed continues to make a mark, reminding us all of the power of perseverance, passion, and hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring up Ryan Reed. Mr. Reed, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Uh -huh. Uh, how can I come up after that? That was beautiful. That was you. How are you? That was you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Welcome. Awesome. Awesome. So glad that you could be here with us today to talk about, first of all, let me slow down and tell you exactly what the Lunch and Learn Hour is. This is an hour. Literally, it's 30 to 45 minutes of time where we sit back and we talk all about the building of businesses. And you've done that, but you didn't start there. And one of the things that we like to do here at the Lunch and Learn Hour is to discuss what were the steps that you took? How did you decide to do the things that you did and the challenges that you faced? Because not one time have I ever gone on this particular show and said that being an entrepreneur is easy. Would you say that it is? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And I think one of the hardest things, especially with the advent of social media and people really building their businesses using platforms like Facebook and Instagram, is people believe the hype and forget that there is actual work that goes on behind the scenes. So those are a couple of the things that I definitely wanted to talk to you about today. But first, you started out in football. Is that right? It is. Okay. You know, that was my first love. Mm -hmm. I just knew. I was going to the NFL Hall of Fame. I just, I just knew it. Really? Okay. But my, my body said otherwise. Mm, you know? Okay. Okay. And, and you know, I came to realize that I feel like football served its purpose to keep me mm -hmm. out of trouble as a kid. Mm. You know, that's okay. what I feel like football did for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I really wasn't <laughs> meant the right. NFL Hall of Fame, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So. So in that, you were you disappointed? So let's let's go there. Let's let's deal with that because I hear a lot of people say how disappointed they were and they continue to live in their glory days. I literally have a friend, this true story. I have a friend that had the same goals and dreams and aspirations that you did, wanted to go to the NFL and so forth, and it didn't work out. Like you said, your body said otherwise, and he sustained an injury that was permanent, and now he's like 56. And if he tells me about his glory days in high school one more time, it's almost <laughs> as if he's not moved on from it. So mm -hmm. once you decided or once once life said, nah, bruh, that's not for you. 
did you have that moment where you were like, life is over? Or did you immediately get up and say, no, 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 no. There has to be something different for me. How did you handle that? Oh, I, something different. I'm like, what's next? Really? You no, know, I, I never, I never soak in no kind of, no, it's what's next. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's mm -hmm. not working out. I got to do something else. Okay. Okay. Um, I was on my, um, I was on my crutches and I was like, it's over. I'm done. Mm -hmm. So I started back working a mm -hmm. nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I started digging graves at the cemetery. So that's what I did after football. Really? Like, yep. I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm like, okay, I got benefits and making some money. Mm -hmm. I started thinking like, nah, can't do this. <laughs> right, right. Can't do this the rest of my life. Right, so right. So I'm like, what's next? Yeah. So I'm always a what's next person. Mm hmm mm hmm And yeah. so digging those graves, were you at ever were you ever at any time angry or were you like, I got to figure out a way to make this work for me for right now until I can do better? No, I was thankful. Okay. I was never angry because okay. you know, after I got hurt, you know, I couldn't work where I was playing. Mm -hmm. nothing nothing was guaranteed no money mm. so i'm thankful that i'm working making money now i yeah. had a two-year-old at the time mm, okay so I, I was thankful i gained some family members from the job good so good. i was i'm okay yeah yeah so that worked out for you so then you you decided what was the next move for you so you left football and mm -hmm. you're you're digging graves and mm -hmm. how did you transfer that over to what you're doing now what were the steps okay what happened i i did security part-time for the holidays mm -hmm. and my brother he opened up a, a marijuana dispensary and he said you know what you can quit the job doing security there mm -hmm. do security for me you can open mm -hmm. my door for me Mm -hmm. And right then, don't know why I said it, but I was like, no, I'm going to start a company. And I can, you can put one of my staff members in there. Okay. That's, that's when everything changed. And everything changed from there. And so how hard was it for you to find clients at that point? Um, well, at that point, it was almost, it, it, was, it was hard just because mm -hmm. I was still building my paperwork. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go out getting big clients mm -hmm. with no no license, no insurance, stuff like that. Right. But right. I was kind of doing it kind of slow rolling it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and then one day, I got a phone. That's why I tell business people, when you knew, no office hours. I um, answered my phone at 3 in the morning. Mm. And there was a company needing security bad. Mm-hmm. And when I say I done made over a million books off of these people. Really? So, yes. So I say those office hours for new, you know, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. throw them out the window. Throw them out the window. So yeah. you have to ultimately, so what I'm hearing you say is, is you have to be available. Be available. At all times. Because yep. you never know when that opportunity is going to not. Never know. You never know. I like that. Y'all heard it first now. The brother said, do not. Keep regular office hours because it keep you. It could keep you from your money. It could yep. keep you from that big opportunity. And I feel that absolutely, yeah. And I'm gonna tell you the same thing. He's right. Like if I have a meeting or something like that in the evening or whatever, like I stayed late, out late last night with clients or potential clients, you know, teaching them more about the business of what we do. Yeah, you're right. I didn't get home till one in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's so how it works. Yeah, you do. And. So, so I'm glad that we brought that up because I think um, people have a propensity to think that when you're in business for yourself, that you are doing a nine to five. And that's not true, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Not, at, not even close. Mm -mm. You're really doing, you really are doing 24 seven. You're on you call. Are. You're yeah. on call all the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think um, one of the things that I always like to tell viewers, listeners, and subscribers, whenever they're watching or they're listening to the radio version of this particular show is be prepared for anything. 
<laughs> yes. Because anything yes. can happen when you yes. are in business and you have to be prepared. So when you were doing the security, was it just you or did you did you say, I need to bring in some people now? And and were you able and were you able to make sure that it was on a contract basis or did you hire full time people? Well, when I first started, see what I did was I tricked these companies into thinking I was bigger than I was. Ah, so, like every time I emailed, I would say we, us. I would never say I or mm -hmm. me. Okay. So my first job, it was just me. It was supposed to be a one day job, mm. but it ended up being eight days. Mm. So I'm at this place eight days straight. Wow. And I would have my little brother or somebody come. Hey, I gotta take a shower. So come get me for like thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I was doing it. And then as I grew, I was able to, you know, hire staff, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and where I'm out there working with them. Mm -hmm. And luckily I have a supportive family. Yeah. And, you know, they help me. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, I have an HR department and they're hiring mm -hmm. everybody. I love it. So it was steps for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so in those steps, and I'm hearing you say that you have an HR department, people that you bring in to do the do the hiring and, and making sure that everybody does what they do. Who who would you what would you say about you being at the head? Um, do you allow this is from a team perspective because you clearly have a team. Do you allow your folks to do what they're supposed supposed to do with the expertise that they have and present back to you as as the head of the organization? Um, or or do you say, do this, do this, do that, do that? And are you, this is a funny one. Are you a micromanager? Do you need to know what's happening every step of the way? Nope, not at all. I, mm -hmm. I, um, I let them, I bought you one for a reason. Yep. And most of the people around me, like mm -hmm. in the HR part, mm -hmm. they're way smarter than me. Right. <laughs> right. They're way smarter than me. Yeah. So I let them do their thing. You know, mm -hmm. if a, you can just report back to me if something bad happens. Right. You know, so I'm not a micromanager. Mm -hmm. You know, I I have trust in the people I hire, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I look over my look over stuff for sure, but Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Look over yeah. stuff for sure, but mm -hmm. let them do their their job. I love that. Yeah. So, how long have you been doing just the security? About seven years now. So I started wow. February 2016. That's awesome. Yeah. And in that time, I'm going to bring this up because it sounds like after you played football, you went home. Right. And so that means that I could be wrong. So correct me at any time. When you, when you went home and the opportunity came up through your brother to do some security for him at his business, the question that I have is, is did you find that as the as you were growing, did you find it difficult to be around the people that you grew up with or in your neighborhood? Or did you have to find yourself um, building different relationships with different types of people that may have had or may have access to other opportunities and things of that nature? And did you find a balance to be able to still be able to connect with the people in your neighborhood or did you just have to say, you know what, y'all don't understand me now? Um, a little bit of both. Okay. Because I would say ninety percent of the people I grew up with, yeah, they're still with me now. You know, that's awesome. They, yeah, they involved. They they want to help me do security. They want to help yeah. me with the football, with the uh -huh. basketball. Mm -hmm. So most of them, they they still around. I love that. They're, yeah, so I, I, I feel like we were, my circle, we were real tight. Yeah. Even yeah. back in the day, and we still tight. So mm -hmm. we can learn these new opportunities together. That's right. how I look at it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I agree with mm -hmm. that. Now, I will say for me, for me, in the business that I run, I, ha I think mm -hmm. I have more people that are saying things like, we can't wait till she fails. Mm, yeah. Or they, because I do have a partner, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we can't, we can't, let's just watch. We're not mm -hmm. going to support them. We're not, we're not going to, we're going to not, we're, we're not going to not follow them on their social media and what they have going on. But let's just see what happens. Cause we get word 
And so when that happens, or if you've ever had that experience, do you keep those enemies closer or do you remove them from your atmosphere? Uh, they out of here. <laughs> but I, if, if they do that, they never told me. I never got wind of it yet. Yeah. But they out of here. Yeah. Now I have, I can understand being skeptical. Yeah. My own, my mother was skeptical. Mm. She was like, how are you going to do that? Like, what? Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. didn't understand my vision. She didn't see yeah. like, mm -hmm. so I'm like, no, I'm gonna show you. But yeah. she didn't mean no malice or nothing towards it. Right. She was just right. thinking like, well, we from Finkel, we from the yeah. hood. What you mean? How you gonna do that? Yeah. And I'm sure I have people, you know, hating on me behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but I got a net on me. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I can't it. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So. If if I catch wind of it, you you can't be around me. You can't. Right. I can't do negativity. Right. Absolutely. I love that. And so now that you've got the security business, mm -hmm. I heard you say football team. Yeah. We didn't even talk about that. We I thought we <laughs> wait a minute. So let's talk about that. Now, how in the world did you end up owning a football team? How did that happen? Um, well, I play well. My guy Quentin, yeah. Um, he played for the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I, um, I played for the Detroit Cougars actually. Um, right after I came back from the Stars Football League, okay. I played for the Cougars briefly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got done, started doing business, mm -hmm. and I found out you know he was selling the team. Mm. So I reached out to him, we did the little he did his, did his process. Yeah. We became close. Yeah. So he um let me own a team. Cause he know I was already in business. Mm -hmm. Football was my thing. Mm -hmm. So this is my third year being an owner. And what's that like? It's challenging, but it's but it's like it's 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 beautiful at the same time. Really? Yeah, it so, is. Yeah, and I saw you light up when you just said that. So let's expand on that. You said, yeah, it is. Well, what's beautiful about it? And what was it like when, because see, when you become an owner, I'm going to give you a perfect example. Let's say, for instance, you know, I'm working for a company, the company gets bought out, and then here come the new people, right? Mm -hmm. Here comes the new owners. Here come the people that are going to be cutting my paycheck. And I'm looking at you sideways. Like, what you getting ready to come in here and change? <laughs> Did you come up against any of that when you when they when you were first introduced to the to the Cougars as guys, this is your new owner? And here's, you know, did you have an opportunity to meet the people? What was I now I'm invested? I got <laughs> questions. I need well, a lot of the players were still there when I played. Yeah. So I knew a lot of them. Okay. And I got my, I came in with my own coaches, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. lie. I mm -hmm. came in with my own coaches, my own mm -hmm. little system. Mm -hmm. But I upgraded everything. Mm -hmm. like we're gonna have better uniforms, better this, better that. Mm -hmm. So they loved me. Okay. So I didn't have to come up against any, because most players in the league sign one year contracts. I see. You know, I just see. so they can, we're trying to get you to the NFL or CFL or I higher, see. higher league. Uh huh. Uh, I had a well. I've heard it were was a couple people kind of jealous and was like, "How that happened? Like, what's going on with that? How? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. Why he do that? You know?" Yeah. So I heard the office got some some questions about it. Yeah. But personally, nah, I didn't um really have to go up against that. Yeah. So nobody was bucking the system, going, "Oh, okay, now who he think he is?" You know, especially nah. the people. You know, yeah, nah. Well, that's they was most of them was happy for me. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, so now we're talking the football team, and I heard mm -hmm. you say we're trying to get you to the NFL. We're trying to get you to the CFL. What process do you do? Do you guys reach out to the NFL and and say, hey, are you? Is it like when you're in college and the scouts come out? How does that mm -hmm. work? Well, I have some NFL, some arena. Mm -hmm. You know, I have like numbers in my phone. Okay. So I look at you playing in our league. Mm -hmm. 
if I think you're really good enough to play next level, I'll make a phone call. If I don't think that, mm -hmm. I might need to work on a lot of stuff. Okay. You know, you got stuff to work on because the NFL, mm -hmm. they see it on TV. They think it's, I could do that. Yeah. But it's a way different ball. It's, it's so different. It's totally different. Like, it's different. I'm like, if you can't excel here, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say it's no way you're going to excel up there. Right, right. It's, Absolutely. It's, it, it's different. Okay. And so I, um, we market them, you know, mm -hmm. get them from game film. We market them. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know, pay the players that reach their goals and their contracts. Mm -hmm. So we just give you a platform. That is amazing. So they get to play, they get paid to play. And then you also give them a platform. Ooh, I'm so, so, okay. Interesting question that I'm going to ask. Are you acting as their agent in that regard, or do they have their own? Most of them have their own. Okay. But I actually do. I do agent work for free. Like I see. I reach out to coaches and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like I got this guy. He's six so. He's from so and so so and so. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. should take a look at him. Yeah. So my my team, the players with no agents, mm -hmm. and they have talent. Mm -hmm. I will, you know market them for okay. no charge i just do it mm -hmm. and if talks advance i advise them you might want to get you an agent you know so you're just good people yeah I, i'm trying to help people you're just trying to help i yep. see i see and now that you have the football league you have the security company and you're a young guy like you you you're you're seasoned but you're not like 60, 65 or anything right. like that. So you're still young in this game of business. Yeah. And so you've got the security company. You're and, and I heard what you said earlier. You know, you had a client who's been able to help you, you know, not help you, but you've 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 been able to acquire a substantial amount of resources from them monetarily. I'll put it like that. So <laughs> then you have the football team. Yeah. And then you just started the women's basketball league. Let's talk about that. What made you decide that you were going to do stuff like this or this? Mm -hmm. Or what about this one? <laughs> That's the one everybody loves. <laughs> That's the one that everybody loves. Yep. How? What were you, what, what was going through your head when you decided that you wanted to start a women's basketball league well i was thinking about my nieces you know i have one niece janicia she's about six five wow. you know she was like six three at 11 12. i got marquila she's real good with the rock like the basketball she's mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. so i was sitting watching WNBA one day mm -hmm. and i realized like they only got 12 teams mm -hmm. I'm like, so where do Janicia go? Where does Marquila go when they're done playing? Right, yeah. And that was back in 2021. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the next day, I went on my on my state website and made the name Women's Basketball League. Okay. And I was like, oh, we, I'm uh, I'm gonna do something with this. Okay. I'm like, I'm gonna make a platform for ladies to ball out, get okay. that professional, get that professional tag. Mm hmm and either go overseas or get looks from the WNBA. Right. So okay. it was really my nieces. Okay. That's excellent. And so now here you are with all of these teams. So in total, you have, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share them again. You have the, let's start at the beginning. Let's see. You have the Indiana Thunder. Mm -hmm. We have the Toledo Wild. Yep. We have the Chicago Flames. Come on with these logos. Let's see the Grand Rapids Soul. Hey, this is all right. The Flint Fever. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the Detroit Shock, which we know was a part of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. And so do you own them outright or do you have partners? And in that partnership or those relationships, how do these folks play? Do you 
reach out to these different cities and say, hey, let's go play over here. Let's go play. And do you get promoted? Like this sounds like this is ridiculously huge. <laughs> Please explain to me. Well, right now I own all the teams. Okay. But I but I do have WNBA players, like ex players and ex WNBA front office people interested yeah. in buying some teams. Ah. So soon we're going to, you know, go offload some teams. Mm -hmm. So right now the only owners are me, my mother, and my two mm -hmm. little brothers. Okay. Okay. Cause, cause back, when we, back when we were little, you know, my my older brothers, they were grown. Mm -hmm. It was just me, my little brother, two little brothers, and my mm -hmm. mother. Mm -hmm. She had a license. She had a license plate that said "Just Us Four. Mm -hmm. I still remember that. So I said, you know what, Mama, I'm gonna give you some of this team. Brandon, you can have some of this team. Okay. DJ, you take some of this team. I love so it. So right now, it's just even though I'm doing all the work. <laughs> just, I, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all y'all ain't doing nothing. Yeah. But no, I'm, I'm messing around. I'm messing around. Yeah. I'm, I, I said. I want them to have something, you know, they can sit back, don't have to do no work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and make the money off of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. So. so in owning all of the teams mm -hmm. and putting together the women to play and mm -hmm. the coaches and all mm -hmm. of that, I want to know, you said you have, you have your, your father of one, number one, how do you do it and still have time for family? And number two, where do you find time for Ryan in all of this? It sounds like you're busy 24 seven. Well, I am, but it's, it's pretty much almost no Ryan time. Mm. You know? mm -hmm. pretty much, right now, you know, it's pretty much no Ryan time. Okay. But you know, okay. family, um, I kind of pop up when I can. Yeah, daughter, but I do make sure I'm at every softball game mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and things like that. I use FaceTime a whole lot. Wow, I can say wow. it like that. Okay, so my, okay. So my daughter, she 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 she's she around. <laughs> she's somewhere. She hate coming work to work with me because whatever yeah. I do, it's like this is boring. She, you know, she yeah. almost thir she almost thirteen. Oh yeah, I get it. <laughs> so she it's I like, it. mm -hmm. I'm like you you coming? <laughs> no, she like no. No, I'm good, Dad. I'm yeah, I'm good. Good. yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Play on my um, phone or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's not really me time right now, but I, I feel like what I'm building for my family mm -hmm. is worth it. You know, absolutely. I feel like it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are your long term goals for the women's basketball league? And what's the word on the street? with the, the the WNBA and you with the women's basketball league or is there buzz are they talking about you what are we what are we hearing in these streets well my well some vets are talking about me like for example the first ever women's basketball league is called the WBL the first ever women's mm -hmm. league in America the WBL yeah those ladies embrace me so much mhm mm it's it's like they just had me in Chicago last weekend. Yeah, like those ladies embraced me so much. Mm -hmm. You got other um, WNBA players mm -hmm. or ex players like, mm -hmm. hey, we need to help with this. Yeah, I see what you're doing, mm -hmm. and you doing a you doing a good job, and we need to help grow the game. Right. As right. far as the current WNBA, they probably heard of us, but they mm -hmm. haven't reached out or nothing like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, so I don't really know with them, mm -hmm. but in the future, I'm hoping we can work together because I'm not here to step on toes. Right. I just want to make more opportunities. Absolutely. And I understand WNBA, they're the big dogs. I understand yeah. that. Uh -huh. So my goal is to get people, you're going to expand one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the NBA has a G League or development league, mm -hmm. why can't the WNBA? Right. Absolutely. Awesome. And you're right. You're absolutely right about that. Why mm -hmm. not? Yeah. I love so, it. Yeah. If we can help fill that role, mm -hmm. that's my goal. I love who it. knows? We, we might be a huge lead. Like, who huge. knows? Yeah, who knows? So and, and here's what I love about what you're doing, though, is you're, 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 you're stepping in and stepping out on your faith 
and the ability that's currently within you. And you're saying, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And there are a lot of people, because here comes my final question. There are a lot of people who have amazing ideas and they'd never move on. Mm. And I'm hearing you say, I started a million dollar company. Then I messed around and I decided I wanted to start a football league or I bought a football league. Now I have, I own all of the teams on the W, uh, the WBL, the women's basketball league, mm. and you're going to continue to grow. And you just bought the Detroit shop from what I understand. Um, yeah, we bought, the, um, bought the name. You yeah. bought the name. You bought the name. So now, so now here you are with all of this. What would you say to anyone that is considering following the vision in their head. What what would you say you did, and and what advice would you give somebody? Cut out the outside noise. Mm -hmm. Just just go. Just just do it. Mm -hmm. And if you if you fail once, twice, three times, keep going. Like mm -hmm. those not you you have to fail to win. You yeah. have to. Yeah. So so keep going. Cut the outside noise out. Do mm -hmm. your research. Mm -hmm. um, become a master at your craft. And just, mm. just go. Cause I, I have a, co I have a cousin. You know, he wants to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. So he's been talking to me for the last couple of years. He's like, man, I, I read this book, read that book. I'm reading this book. I'm like, listen, bro. Put them books down. Mm. What do you want to? What do you want to do? Mm. I'm like, put the books down. What do you want to do? Let's do it. Because you're reading this, this guy's experience, and yeah. I'm like, brother. I'm like, not to bring race into it. That's a white guy. We're right. gonna have different. We're gonna have different experiences. Yeah, yeah. In our in in, in the world. So mm -hmm, put your books mm -hmm. down and let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's get to work, man. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just do it. Just do it. Just just do it. Yep. Even in the fear, because I'm sure you had yeah. your days. Like, what am I doing? I, I thought that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, you getting like, oh my! You start seeing more and more people like. <laughs> The news calling you. Mm -hmm. The newspaper wants you. I'm on Brownstone Worldwide. I'm like, hey. oh, snap. <laughs> I'm like, right, like right. The, the light's getting kind of big. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But I got faith, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so the last thing that I will ask is what is the good, the bad, and the ugly of being an entrepreneur for you? Um, the good is I get to build a life for my for my family mm -hmm. and my kids, my future grandkids mm -hmm. that you know I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Even though my moms were good, we were always you know we were good, clean yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, the bad is I love time. Like that's the most valuable thing on this earth is time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have none of it <laughs> right now. Because <laughs> you're always I, busy, but that's a good yeah, thing. That, it is a good thing. Yeah. Goodness, yeah. I miss so many family functions and stuff like that. Wow. Oh wow. Uh, um, I hate it. And the ugly is every man for themselves mm. <laughs> in mm. his business world. It's every man for themselves. So you so gotta look out for you. Got to. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. survival of the fittest. When you in business, mm -hmm. like you think somebody your friend, mm. you think this company cool. Mm. Nah, <laughs> nah. Boy, yeah. Boy, we can have a whole show just about that. We could just on that. Absolutely, I might have to bring folks back for that one because you brought up an excellent point before we wrap, and that is you have to look out for you. And, and something that I've learned over the years is I have, have gained and lost who I thought were friends is contracts make better friends. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that, that much I can absolutely say. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Ryan Reed. He is the founder of Women's Basketball League Incorporated. Also um, the owner and founder of a security company and he owns the Detroit Cougars. My man, you are one busy guy. You busier than James Brown. Didn't they say that he was the busiest man in show business? And no, I didn't even bring up my semi truck. Oh that's a whole other, that's a whole other story. We he, can do say that. So, and, and then he slides that in. So you own a semi truck.
company. Yep. So you, mm -hmm. you, okay, so you're in logistics as well. Yep. So we can bring that up for another episode. Yes, another <laughs> episode. Because listen, that's you know people problem. out there that's, oh my goodness, there are so many people that want to know what you know about that business. Listen, if, if getting knocked on your butt was a word, Oh. In the dictionary, I'll be right there next to really? the dictionary. So, and I learned a lot. So yeah, tell them to reach out to me. I can I show you. Will. Yeah, I absolutely. Just, I, We're going to have to yeah. bring you back so we can just talk about just that, the trucking business. Now, mm -hmm. my family was in the trucking business for years in the 70s and the 80s when, when trucks were not as luxurious as they are now. Right. Um, right. And the Peterbilt was, was king. So yeah, mm -hmm. I most definitely remember that. Um, but I just definitely want to say Thank you so much for taking time to come and hang out with us today on today's Lunch and Learn Hour. Um, and, and big shout out to you for all that you're doing for uh, women in sports and also just giving people an opportunity. Because even though you're saying that you are definitely making sure that you're looking out for your family, you're looking out for the community as well because you, you, you're paying people. And guess what they're able to do? They're able to take care yeah. of their families as well. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. huge. Thanks. That's a big that. deal. You know, so big shout out to you and everything that you're doing. Uh, we definitely want to have you come back because now I got I, I'm definitely nosy and curious. I want to know how you got in that business as well. Okay, so that, definitely. And, and, and this month, ladies and gentlemen, we have on the cover of Brownstone Living Magazine, which is already out, um, is WNBA great Val Whiting is on the cover. So we're really excited about that. We are absolutely going to provide you with information on how you can get your copy. You can head over to brownstoneworldwide.com for more on how you can find out more about Mr. Reed. And also he's going to be in Brownstone Living Magazine as well. So go ahead and check that out. And most definitely go ahead and Download that app right there, KCCR Radio, and take a listen to the Lunch and Learn Hour, which airs on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mr. Reed, are, do you have any parting words for our audience today? Just be great. Be great. You be heard great. what he said, everybody. I appreciate you for coming and taking time to spend with us because I do know that you are busy and so um, if there is nothing else, thank you once again for coming to hang out with us. Stick around for a hot second. You guys, thank you for hanging out with us here at the Lunch and Learn Hour, a part of Brownstone Worldwide, Brownstone Worldwide Studios. I'm Paulette. We'll see you around.